for another one of us to come through that door so you could all line up and do what you love to do, and that's go on the hunt. Oh, yes, we know exactly who you are. Well, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to know who you are at all. We're the blind ones. You're the ones who can see. But it's, <laughs> as I said, it's not so funny now, is it? Not such a game now, is it? There is no game to play. That's what I told the lady that used to live next door here. I told her, you know, I don't play games. This isn't a game. And lo and behold, her life went down the tubes and she's gone. And I tell people that. I say, it's not a game. Don't play a game with me. You play a game with me, the Lord God's going to smack you down. He doesn't like, uh, you know, his people being messed with. You might have noticed from your own life and what's happened to it. He's, he's obviously dealt with you. So before you, you know, commit suicide, just instead of that, since you can't get out of your problem with suicide, go to the Lord. There I saved you from suicide. I had compassion on you and I told you to go to the Lord for all the rest of it. You repent after a while, you know, hey, you're not worse than Paul the Apostle. So repent. That's all. There's no sense. You're not going to make this thing work out. Okay. You're not going to finally, you know, go back to the old habit you used to have and, you know, make it work out. It's never going to work out. You can't be seen with them. Otherwise, the Lord sees you with them, if you know what I mean. You are them. And it's us and them, right? The lambs that you laugh at are the us. And you know, they're not all laughable at, you know. I mean, there's a lot of lambs who are very, you know, nice people and everything. They're not worth laughing at. Some, some uh, you know, I remember Paul McGuire telling this one, there was a guy who just said he was so alienated and people at the church didn't like him. He used to go hiking in the mountains all alone because, you know, no one wanted to be his friend and all that. I knew what the problem was. He might have been Asperger's or something, you know what I mean? But, I mean, the, the, the problem was that the guy sent him said, you need a psychiatrist. Immediately blaming him for something he should have been putting the blame on the congregation, on the people that were fake, not him. He was real. And, of course, I never really listened to Paul McGuire after that because I saw the line. You shouldn't have shown me that, Paul, baby. We saw the line, and you're on the wrong end of it. <laughs> you got all these people fooled, but there's some people you can't fool. Okay, end of um, lecture. I, I don't know. I, I, these guys, it might be a month from now that the, 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 the person that I was just talking to, and I am, you know, that's, that's, that's a gift, you know, right? Exercising a gift in front of you, why not? And that person... Uh, may hear it today, may hear it a month from now, or maybe a year from now, but he will hear it. And I had a kind of an idea of who I was speaking to. It may fit more than one, but they're going to hear it at the right time. And hopefully it'll be right. At, hopefully they'll take it as a sign from the Lord God, which it is. And they won't just poo-poo it away like every other sign from God. They'll be really ready to receive a word. And they'll be ready to respond, getting right with the Lord, that is. And then the task that you're going to have after that is you're going to have to be nice to all the lambs in the world for, from then on. Any slip up will be met with extreme punishment. <laughs> so, you know, you don't get to go. You, you know, you'll be mocked now as you mocked others. You will be mocked. I was never so mocked as it was in the church. They mocked us. They mocked us. They mocked us. They, they just absolutely couldn't believe we were even trying to go to church. I'm like, I just wanted to worship here and sing songs and pray and stuff. I mean, why do I have to be, you know, obviously what they wanted was people that are conformed to the world system. And uh, anyone else is just too wild and too crazy. And it's just, we, can, we can't deal with that. We need to have a calm thing. Jesus is not going to smile on anyone that's conformed to the world system. Nobody. Not even one. You're talking how many people in these churches? with the requirement and the proviso that they be conformed to the world system first before becoming a member of the church. Wow. 
So therefore, church is there to um, send souls to Satan, a conforming mechanism for society. Therefore, invalid, according to the Lord. That's a, that's a harsh thing to, to have to comprehend. That means that everything you thought and everything you knew is wrong and you're going to have to go back to being a baby and be brought up all over again. That means you're going to be subject to public ridicule and you're going to have to accept it with a glad heart and not hate back. It means that some of the, th- the, the stuff you used to dish out to people may be dished out to you. But all in all, it's going to improve you as a human being and you know, you will, you will, joy will return one day. I know you're miserable now, but, you know, you had it coming, you know, except that you're on the wrong track and God is putting you on the right track. Why not be glad? You know, you weren't healed. Now you're being healed. Be happy. Be grateful that the Lord God disciplines you because he doesn't discipline other people's children, only his own. Be grateful for the correction. You know, I mean, I don't know why there's such a deception out there called a 501c3 church. I mean, you know, I understand, you know, there's this double, double thing going on. But, you know, people just don't learn. Not until there's a huge tragedy. And then maybe they'll change. I saw them change for two weeks after 9-11. And then they went back to the same old, same old. They want to be conformed to the world. They want to have their cake and eat it too. They want the world. And they want all the stuff that goes along with it and to be a good regard in the church and have a fellowship and have everything be nice. And there just is no nice with Satan. That's the problem. Satan hates you. Hates me. Hates us. Hates us all. Bottom line. Uh, It goes back. It's just a long problem. But... You know, this is this is this this dichotomy, this this separation, this line, this division is a line that I didn't put there. Nobody else put there. But, you know, when you cross that line. You know, it's not that you can't get back. It's just that, you know, you've 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 obviously given your consent to the world system and, um, you know, and uh, you gave up your individuality and you decided to, you know, join the team. I mean, there's that's very understandable. But if you want God, you have to get back over that line. And that will make you subject to ridicule. You may have to even move away from your community and be, start something new. I mean, it's just, it's terrible. But they should have told you that. You should have known better. You knew one day the chickens would come home to roost, right? Well... You expect to get a free ride? <laughs> you know, uh, you can just uh, be anything and do anything, and it's cool, man. You know, Jesus understands. Now, the one thing he wanted was, you know, he didn't want the dead. He wants the living. Right? If you cross that line, you're dead, technically. So that you'd be not acceptable. But you can repent. See, that's the thing. You can let God lead and to, 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 to hell with these people or what they think of you. To hell with what, you know, to all of that. You know, you're broken now because the Lord God broke you to, to disabuse you of that, uh, of, your, of the lie you've told yourself, of your deception, so that you'll get right with the Lord and just, you know, follow him. That's what all the people listening in the, to this show do. They're all following the Lord in the best way they can, realizing they're not really welcome in churches or places where free, you know, free speech and free thought are not allowed. You know, when I went to church, they wanted to ram all this doctrine down my throat. You know, it wasn't true. They, they, they disallowed any conversation, the stuff we've been talking about, about physics and the end times and prophecy. They didn't want any of that. None of that talk. They just wanted obedient slaves. You know, obedient to the organization, to the pastor, etc. They didn't want, you know, they wanted to basically take souls away from Jesus and give them to, to man. You know, that was my experience in Los Angeles anyway. We went to, we had a tour of the churches. They were all the same. You know, all identical. The same exact stuff happened in each one. Yeah. 
the, the most bizarre one, though, is where the guy actually started defending Lucifer. You know, it was in the bookstore. There's like a little bookshop cafe area, and then there was the sanctuary. Of course, a joke calling it a sanctuary. It's defiled on a daily basis. But anyway, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I go in and I say, you know, this is the end of Lucifer or whatever. I just made some, you know, glib kind of, you know, just just to, thinking that they'd be going, yeah, heck, heck yeah, you know, that they would be in agreement with me. And the guy becomes all upset and he looks at me and goes, well, he is in the second heaven, you know. He's not some loser. I, I couldn't believe it. They just showed their hand right there, right, right in the bookstore with books like Max Lucado and, you know, all these different books, right? You know, I remember Max and some of the other ones, you know, the, the Billy Graham and, you know, uh, you know and, uh, Chuck Smith and, you know, these various books, right, that, that you see in the Christian bookstores with the artists, you know, like the various artists and, and, uh, and their CDs you could buy and then little T-shirts and stuff. And, um, uh, you know, paraphernalia, like, like little hats that, that say got Christ, you know, instead of got milk and all that kind of stuff. And there they are, you know, honchos defending Lucifer because, you know, it, I unmasked them. Coming from me, it was too much. If one of them had said it, it would have been fine. But the fact that I said it, because, see, they're working on me. They're trying to convert me. Right? They're trying to convert me into Satan and then call it God. And so they're working on me. They're all working on me. So I was there, I remember, on the motorcycle. Then I went back out to get on the motorcycle with, with Trish. And I had an Indian motorcycle back in that day. And I could tell... They were all sitting around outside and I could tell they were throwing curses on the bike. You know, they just wanted me to crash. They just kept putting, you know what I mean? You could feel it. You could feel it. I'm like, geez, you realize that? I said, Lord, I, we need your protection in Jesus' name. We prayed that, you know what I mean? And when it went, 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 you know, putting, putt, putt down the hill, you know, away. It was on Ventura Boulevard in Studio City. And, uh, that was the end of it. Never went back, you know, because th that was hard to watch them all circling around the bike, throwing curses on it. You know what I mean? Knowing how to do witchcraft, doing witchcraft right outside the sanctuary with all the books, all the Christian books. And, um, you know, I mean, I understand, you know, I fully understand. I'm not, I'm not from wherever they're from. I'm not from there. Wherever I am from, they're not from. And where they're from, I'm not from. I try to explain that. You know, they say, you know, they would do symbolic cryptic statements like I need this or I need that from you. You know, they want something from, from us. Something that we, we cannot give. We give our time. We give a shirt off our back. We give, a, a, we give everything to see them. You know what I mean? We'll clean their toilets. We'll do whatever. But there's some things we can't give. They, they belong to the Lord. They have to remain with the Lord. That's just the way it is. Because if the Lord doesn't have that thing that makes you you, then you don't have the Lord. You know, then, then there's a disconnect. There's just some things you can't give over to man because it's like a betrothing of self. It's like a marriage. You can't do that. You cannot consummate with the world. Now, I'm, I'm being nice here. I'm, not, I'm trying not to be perverse, but I mean, it's basically you cannot, you know, have sex with the world, right? You have to, you know, whatever your desire is, whatever that is that makes you you, you know what I mean? It, it's got to be with the Lord. And that's what brings about uh, hard times on people because, you know, when they do that, they make that decision, the people don't, the world goes up against them. And it's very elementary. It's really no big deal, you know. People should not be punished for being on the spiritual path with God, No. But what they object to is, you know, why aren't you, you know, giving up that which is you to, into, the, into the circle of shame? Why aren't you joining us? So they see you as the enemy, you know, and then they attack. And if you die, they, they laugh. They just, it's all justified because after all, you're being a, rebe a rebel. You're not, you're not joining them. So they want to attack you. You're not, you're not putting your shoulder to the plow that they're on, making life easier. Because there's certain things you cannot give the world. And it's, you know, you can't give the world your soul. You can't give the world your, 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 you know, your consent or your desire. 
Uh, otherwise, I mean, you can. Uh, the whole world is, is just waiting for you to do that. And then you'll see everything will be peaches and cream for a while, you know, for a while. But God wants that, that thing that's in you. And then what he'll do with it is he will, he will blossom you. He will, um, you know, they say they'll blossom you. You'll, you'll turn into a, you know, a real human being, a real boy, says Pinocchio. You'll be a real human being with acceptance and talent and a place to work and a place to develop your skill and, and the world will be so appreciative of it. Well, see, the problem with that is it's none of it is of God. It's all rebellion toward God, you know. There's a way that seems right to a man, but that is the way of death. Yes, absolutely. When you join them, you join the dead. And the Lord sees you as dead. Period. Seems right, right? Have a, you know, it's a great day for a white wedding, Billy Idol would say. What do you think he's talking about? Some wedding to a girl? I don't think so. <laughs> spooky, no? Very spooky. Very horror show, yeah? Well, you know, welcome to the real world. It is a horror movie. But, you know, the thing is, is that the people of the world, you know what they need? They need to see you succeed with, with Christ. They need to see you really succeed so that they will do likewise. They need, and that's why the devil's after you. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't want them to see you succeed. They're thinking they might get out because they got to what? Keep them in at all costs. Yeah, you got it. They got to keep them in at all costs. They got to keep them in the corral at all costs. They can't be free. A wild horse wanting three, a, a maverick, a mustang. You know, a herd of mustangs ro roaming free up in Wyoming. A sight to behold. Don't mess with them. They're free. Let, leave them alone. No, they want to go and rope them in, don't they? Just can't help themselves. And that's a good, it's a good kind of analogy because it's, you know, they see you as free. You see? And so they're going to get you at the dinner table. They're going to get you, uh, they're going to do whatever they, you know, they're going to, and then when you don't listen, then they get mad and then they want to plot revenge. I'm saying, you might not even know what you've done wrong. And they're already plotting revenge. It's like, they're coming at me like it's vengeance. What did I do to them? You didn't do anything to them. But you see, it's vengeance. Yeah, the thing that's in them wants vengeance. You don't have that thing in you. They do. When you go to their side, you get that thing in you that wants vengeance. It's Satan. It wants vengeance. Because you're, you, you, you're going to get out of here because you're, you're taking food out of his office plate. You're not, you know, putting into the collective so they can draw energy and power and, uh, and, and success. You're not being a team player. You're being, you know, and that if you don't join us, you're against us, you know, and so we're going to get you. Okay, and that that's kind of winds up this segment. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm just brought to mind to Donald Trump, and I think we're going to have to wind up on Donald Trump because you know, go ahead and turn your your you know your your turn your speakers off now because I'm going to talk about uh, Trump and a couple things. So please turn your speakers off now. Turn the podcast. Nothing to see here, folks. It, it's over. Okay, bye. Um. Yeah, see, I'm concerned because, you know, the, the, the fix is in and it's just, you know, he's a man. I don't know how long the ride goes, but I think that uh, Mr. Trump needs prayer. And um, um, it's just really sad seeing what happened, but I'm so happy he unmasked. You know, not that I needed them unmasked, but he unmasked Mr. McConnell because we all wondered why they were, you know, so willing and keen that anything Obama wanted, they just hopped to it to give it to him. I know. It took so long to elect a Republican, you know, Congress and Senate, you know, it had 130 years or something. And not one benefit came to Republicans. Not one. Can you imagine? They never got anything that they wanted. I mean, little things, but I mean, not, not, no, no change. No, it's just, it's just a horrible situation. But now to see Mitch McConnell proudly voting for Hillary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trump. 
Thank you, Trump family. I, I, you guys are great. Thank you so much for unmasking. I mean, the Romney was big because I always wondered what happened back there. Thank you for showing me so clearly what happened. Thank you for the prophetic explosion that we've had for the people that um, got blessed by God by watching you, but that weren't you know, turning away, that they, they all got uh, gifted with the gifts of the Lord. Thank you so much um, you know, for allowing us to breathe. Thank you for allowing us to see for once that which was hidden to be brought out into view. Thank you, Trumps. I know no one appreciates you. No one likes you anymore. It's, it's just terrible. It's terrible what's happening. Terrible, you know, it's terrible. That's all. To, to, we all know what Hillary Clinton is. And uh, the fact that anyone would vote for her at all, it makes me so disgusted and so absolutely... Um, uh, well, what do I know? You know, what, I belong to the Lord. I'm not really a citizen here because I'm, you know, I'm just a uh, laughing stock. <laughs> That's all. I mean, who cares what? I'm, I'm the idiot, right? I'm the resident fool, right? The resident fool. I, I haven't really joined all the sinners and gotten down to gotten gotten down to it. As Sam Elliott would have it in The Big Lebowski. You know, all us sinners are, you know, working for a living, being part of the system, you know, struggling uh, for the for the legal tender, being a happy idiot and all that. Um, no, uh, some people wanted God and some people were just born that way. But uh, if you're born a lamb in this world, the, the world, uh, if you make it to adulthood, which is doubtful. You see, all that is up in the vengeance against the United States, too. There's a vengeance that's going to come to this country for that very thing, you know, because you can't have the two things to get. It's either one or the other. And the country has voted. It went the way of decadence. It went the way of uh, perversion, decadence, selfishness. And uh, now you're going to suffer. You know what I mean? It's like there's nothing we can do. The lambs will be fine. You know, they'll be fine. You know, God you know, knows the lambs are meek and they can't defend themselves and they can't, there's a lot of things they can't do. They don't have vision. They don't have eyesight. They don't hear anything. They're kind of deaf, dumb, and blind because they don't know how the game works. They don't know how, you know, that there's an off stage. you know, that they're on this Truman show and that there's a, they don't know any of that. They just know that it's been, you know, they've been picked on and they don't know why. And they're told to go to a psychiatrist as if that will help. <laughs> as if that's going to do anything. And uh, lambs are born, you know, that being, you know, there are, there are, there are, they're just, they're just born there. That doesn't mean that they're the only, you know, that all, all that are redeemed are lambs. I think they all have to become lambs, you know, but some are just born that way and they just remain that way. Others repent. Who's to say who's better or worse. It's just, God has his mixture of people, but um, people that have been in the world and then, you know, uh, convert to Jesus tend to do very well being leaders and being organizers and you know what I mean being more gung ho whereas the lambs are kind of more traumatized and you know the original lamb the ones who have just been there since birth are just more kind of traumatized is what they are you know PTSD traumatized you know it's hard to get stuff done and you know they're just different kind of people and uh, the world is just uh, you know they're meek and lovely people but the world is <laughs> who don't mean anybody any harm, usually, right? And um, the world is just a cruel, cruel, cruel thing. Wow, we've got some real lightning. It's, it's been happening. It's coming closer. Um, so that has to be paid for. I said that's going to be paid for. Um, the, the Lord will ultimately avenge, see, Revelation 18 he will avenge, you know, those who have been unfairly attacked and maligned and through no fault of their own just been tortured just because people like picking on someone that's meek and they, they can't fight back and they just like kicking them and kicking them and kicking them and kicking them and hurting them and betraying them and inviting them to the prom and spilling pig's blood on them. I mean, they keep doing this. So there's going to be a day of reckoning. And that day is coming. 
So if I were you, world, I would repent ASAP because you don't want to be on the other side of that uh, judgment. No, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. And I think what we're seeing, the precursor of what we're seeing is, you know, what I'm seeing is this, these signs are telling me, you know, this is, you know, not the same world that you were in before. Just keep, keep vigilant here. Keep that heads up. And, you know, the other thing is for the lambs, you know, just be, you know, forgiving. Forgive them because they know not what they do. They really don't. You know how kids are when they get a weak one in the playground. They pick on him like they picked on my brother so horribly. He was scarred for life and he's dead now. He died at 33 years old. Yep, he did not have a way to defend himself. He he was just a, an open target, and, and, you know, people just tried to force him to be conformed to the world, force him to be, you know, what he wasn't. And then when they couldn't force him, then they, they were repulsed by him, and he became somewhat of a pariah. You know, they didn't want him around. Yet he had more of a connection, you know what I mean? And if If anything, he should have been revered, but he wasn't. And the shame goes on the you know the local church and his wife obviously his uh, the, the, you know people just betrayed him something awful including me because I I you know didn't understand his uh, autism it was like autism you know and I and I just uh, I could have spent more time with him and I you know I could have uh, looked out for him better you know there's a lot of things I could have done that I didn't do and uh, you know that's just hey look see I was awful right but I've repented on that. And I've confessed it publicly. And um, I mean, my whole life, when I see people that are similar to that, I just automatically love them. You know what I mean? Just unconditionally. It's just I'm, I'm drawn to them. You know, it's almost like the Lord made it good. You know, what was what was kind of bad? Because when we're kids, you know, you see the kid getting picked up. He's the nerd. He's the weirdo. You don't you don't know him. Right. You're guilty of that. I was guilty of that as a kid. Then later, I got the same treatment he got. I got the same treatment, wound up in a coma, wound up, um, just terrible things happened, you know what I mean? And so I got, I eventually learned the torture he must have gone through firsthand because it happened to me. The Lord didn't let me off the hook. He, he you know, for all that uh, callousness that I showed when I was a boy, by the time I was a teenager, boy, did I get kicked in the teeth. I, I certainly got, you know, more than I gave. I got more than I gave because the Lord just wanted to teach me a lesson and that lesson never ended. I mean, I, I kept, you know, it, it seems since that started, it kept on all the way down to, you know, today. So that I never forget, you know, that the, the meek will inherit the earth. I never forget that, you know, the lambs are, you know, to watch out for them. You know, even if I wasn't one, I'd be watching out, you know, just make sure they don't get picked on, make sure, you know, when things happen to people and, um, that are unfair because they're, they can be terrible out there. I mean, they'll, they'll tell you, Oh, you thought you were a human being on earth, but you know, <laughs> you know, you're living in some kind of little bubble. You know what I mean? They, they laugh at you because you don't know what they know. You don't hang around with they they're, they're off stage running things, you know? And so when you think you're a painter or you think you're a musician or you think you're a, um, a seamstress or you think you're a, you know, a, 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 a pilot or you think you're anything they go ah oh, he he thinks he's a pilot he thinks she thinks she's a seamstress she thinks he thinks he's an actor <laughs> or whatever you know what i mean they that's how they are that's how it is it's just like that just like what i just did oh that happened to me yeah you know uh that uh when i was yeah that happened to me from a lawyer said oh he thought he was a producer <laughs> It was just like that. I, I kid, no, seriously, right in front of me on the phone. Oh, yeah, he thought he was a producer. And that's why, you know, things went south and, you know, because no one's going to let him you know, do anything. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, <laughs> just like that in my face. I was so traumatized from that. I, I, I've been, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't, you know what I mean? It was, it, they weren't trying to abuse me. They were just being like they were, you know, and I, I just... Uh, yeah, I didn't recover from that for a long time. Well, to be mocked, you know, so earnestly 
so matter-of-factly makes the trauma 10,000 times worse. By my own lawyer, who was, this was presiding over our, my divorce with, uh, you know, it's like, well, you know, there's got to be money from that film you produced or whatever. He goes, oh, yeah, he thought he was, but, the, you know, no, of course they're not going to, you know, almost indicating that the reason the film isn't going to go anywhere, there's, you know, he thought he was a producer. <laughs> uh, no one's going to let that film go anywhere, you know, unless he, you know, becomes one of them. I mean, I mean, he's, he's, not, he's nothing now. He's, he's just a fool who thinks he's this or thinks he's that. I mean, what are you going to do? Try to contain him, right? Keep him in and all co- Keep him contained. Don't let him see anything. Here's the idiot. Uh-oh, the idiot's here. Look out. That stuff's hard to bear. Oh, boy, does that cause trauma. That can actually cause you. That kind of thing causes you to be a shut-in. And then they go, it's your fault. You know, it's like, my fault of what? And then they shut up and they don't tell you what your fault is. You can never find out what your crime is. They will never tell you. You will never, if you say, well, what is, what is, what, how do I become a real boy? And they won't tell you that either. They're very dishonest people, these lizards. Very, very, very dishonest. And the funny thing, at the end of the day, they all think they're saved. You know, if they're in religion or whatever, they, or if they go to their temples or their mosques or their churches, they all think they're devout and that God has favor on them. God hates them. You think he likes to see when you're mocked and belittled as thinking you're a human being on earth, but what a joke, he's really just a dunce, a fool, and they're all kind of like avoiding uh, even looking at you like you're that much of a, of a freak and it traumatizes you to the point where you don't show your face again? Uh, let me just clue you in, just because I know there's secular people listening today, so let me just clue, clue you in. The entire force of God's vengeance is against the people that would, 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 would behave that way, that would that think that way, that, that assume that um, these people are, you know, these lambs, if you will, are, you know, some kind of you know, pathetic um, thing that needs to be managed or whatever, you know, that kind of attitude. Uh, that is the source of probably three quarters of the vengeance that's coming to the earth. Oh, and vengeance is what's called for. Oh, there's, there's, there's you know, you know what the mama bear will do, right? Well, now you're dealing with the whole, you know, the whole creation of mama bears. <laughs> uh, you, you, just, <laughs> you just have no idea. You see, they don't see what I see. They don't understand the way it works. God allows this to go on a long, long time, even generations, even millennia, to allow time for people to repent of their own free will. And then that time that is allotted is over. And the Lord calls that time, that next time that comes after that, he calls that vengeance. And he says to his people, to the prophets, who are also separate, by the way, and mocked, yes, because of that, to the lambs, to all who lost their lives unfairly, who didn't even know any better, that, to the people that were written off as feeble or fools, to all the people that were unfairly treated in that way. And by the way, if they're not over there, God still considers them connected to him. Even if they say they don't know anything about God or Jesus, it doesn't matter. That's another little thing. That, another pesky little fact that they just can't, they can't handle. I mean, that right there just, oh my God, that drives them insane. With anger, insane. That they that these these losers would be the beloved. Yeah, it was insane. With anger. Well, I don't don't worry, I've run into them murderous intent in their eyes. Oh yes. And um I know I know this 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 up and back, you know. The thing is the thing that they should have been all along would be kind to people that are lambs, because the lambs are just innocent. They don't know anything. They just feel beleaguered. They're not going to get the seat at the table. They're not getting the good corner office with the window view. They're not, you know what I mean? They're, 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 they're the meek. They're the definition of the meek. 
you know, a lot of times people, you know, need to, to look out for them because they can't, can't really fend for themselves sometimes. These are people that for whatever reason were made the way they were made. It's not like they're like the people in the world. It's like we're all the same. You just got to decide which side you're on. That's all. Well, I've decided I was on the Lord's side. And they said, ah, <laughs> he thought he was a Christian. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. Oh, he thought he was going to church. <laughs> he thought he was welcome there. <laughs> and so I understand what, you know, the, the, I, no, I have to have a session like this one, you know, to, to reiterate that I understand, um, you know, what y'all go through, why you become shut-ins, why you have, no, there's no point for you to mingle with them. They're just going to, they're going to do the same teasing and mocking again, or they might to your children who are like you, you know, they they're just... They have a zero tolerance policy for the, the pe- people, not just of God, but, the, you know, to, of the meek. They, they prey upon the weak and the meek instead of looking out for them. Now, every once in a while, there's somebody in the world system, like I knew a gal that was, you know, I said, well, you seem to be like a protector of the lamb. She goes, that's exactly what I am. She's in the world system. She's a protector of the lamb. And God has favor on her because of that. But she knew exactly what she was. And that's why she'd been nice to me. A gal from Hol- you know, a Hollywood, uh, you know, director, screenwriter, whatever, famous, kind of famous, whatever. But uh, she'd always been nice to me, even though you know this whole thing was go- was roiling around. The attitude was more like, you know, goes from who are you to think you know you're above us, right? You're, you're better than us, or you're you know you you don't need to join us or whatever. There's that. There's that. Then there's this, um, look what a pathetic fool this is, right? You know, mocking and laughing. And that comes later as a vengeance thing. And then there's the uh, poisoning the food, poisoning your water, poisoning your food, you know, trying to get you to die as a sacrifice, right? So you get, those are the three modalities of bullying and pain and suffering that you go through. And these people are completely unrepentant as they go to their churches. They actually feel that they're in favor with God. And that when they're picking on you, they're doing God's service. Absolutely. They're so deluded and so far gone in in that kind of thinking. They might even think that, you know, up is down and down. After a while, everything goes backwards, right? Being a bully is really being nice. You know, I have to hurt I have to hurt you to help you. You know, they, they have that's kind of how they think. <laughs> Mommy dearest on steroids. And they mock, ah, oh, <laughs> oh, you thought she was dating you because she really liked you. Ah, oh, because <laughs> you, you thought you had something going on. Oh. I mean, it's really, it's horrifying. It's, it's the kind of stuff, it's like the movie Carrie times a million in terms of oppression and bullying. And I see people go through this. Now, my brother went through that. That just horrible, just horrible treatment. Me, I could kind of, you know, imitate them. I could kind of slide by a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm not going to join them, but I could stay out of their wrath to a certain point. Now I can't because of the Zephyr report, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I got some skin in the game. I'm glad I did that. I don't like being afraid. I have to fight my fear all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, there's nothing to be afraid of ultimately, you know, but I get tested all the time of, you know, am I going to, well, some of my accomplishments have been maybe not as good as Jonathan Cleck when he sees somebody that's demonic coming out when the demon's coming right through somebody after him, he goes right after it. But I've done things like double down on the Lord when surrounded by the enemy and, you know, praising the Lord and doing just being outrageous at times. You know, I've, 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 I've got some, 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 uh, some victories in that area and they all get so flummoxed. They don't know what to do. <laughs> they just go crazy. They don't know what to do when you start like, you know, praise God, you know, and you just really, it's like the guy that's a world or he's going, praise God. It's no, no, I'm me. Praise God. I'm saying it. Not you, you don't count because I just said it. Ah, see what I mean? Two can't say it. 
one from one side, one from the other, both saying praise God. One of them's got to be wrong, right? And the only way they get shown to be wrong is if both say it at the same time. And then the one that's wrong, he blinks, he blinks, he falls apart. He falls apart. They all have to gather him back together and depart your company. Game over. No more having fun with, with uh, Carrie anymore. No more pig's blood. <laughs> he just ruined everything, didn't you, Zeph? What, for saying praise God? You're not supposed to say that along with us. Why? Because it ruins everything. Why can't you just kind of like submit? I didn't know I wasn't submitting. Why don't you just come clean and explain to me the whole thing? Now, screw you. Screw you, Z. He's trying to trick us. No, because you're not allowed to talk. So you got this big offstage presence. You got a big, giant, sweet offstage. You got a big trailer with the, for all the movie stars. So you're all there offstage just having a real, real fun with us people stuck in the Truman Show that think it's real. You're just having a great time at our expense, aren't you? And, uh, you know, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. The Lord's going to rescue me. And I don't care if you say it's waiting for Godot or not. I don't care what you say. I know my father's coming for me and he's not going to forsake me. I know that. And every day that I got to put up with you people and walk through your little gauntlet and walk through your gang stalking and walk through your bullying and walk through your mocking and your laughing and oh boy, it's really funny. Well, every day my Lord walks me through. My head up high and you know, you've attack my body, you've attacked my health, you, you try to make it like no one would want to be you, you know, that sort of thing. Make me an example. Every day I've walked through. I got people out there that have blessed me, people I have to work with, and they're protectors of lambs too, you know, so I've been blessed with good people toward the end here of my life. I went through a lot of trouble earlier on. But uh, it, it hasn't been, but I'm ready for the shoe to drop, whatever, you know, there'll be a battle with a disease, maybe something, you know, there'll be something, you know, the errant doctors giving you the wrong meds. Or, there's always something that, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to take Psalm 23. I'm going to take Psalm 91. I'm going to take Psalm 37 and I'm going to blend those together and I'm going to just be confident, you know, that the Lord will deliver me. He's my father. He's not going to just Throw me to the wolves for no reason. I mean, if there'd be a reason if I did, I'd have to be prepared. But, you know, the Lord is mysterious and they don't understand the Lord. These people that run the religions, I'm, I'm convinced that a guy like Rick Warren, he does, has no clue. He blamed his own son for killing himself. <laughs> I mean, how bizarre is that? You know, he, he's the guy that's shown with Barack Obama, you know, uh, initiating him into the White House. What the hell is that? Anyway, there's going to be, so I'm very grateful to Trump for demasking so many people. Oh, I know if it, you know, I'd probably be, you know, an outcast in his country club. Of course I would. You know, I'm, an, I'm a crazy artist anyway. You know what I mean? But, uh, um, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have his experience. I have my own walk. I've got my own life to live. And, and, you know, and a lot of the derision and disrespect and mocking and bullying and things, you know, they're not really laughing so hard now. You know what I mean? It's kind of turning the other way that there is respect. There is, there is, uh, you know, like, a little bit of acknowledgement that I might have been right. There is that going on. You know, that the tide has definitely turned. And that's, again, how I know we're getting toward the end here because, you know, that's un unheard of. <laughs> right? Well, the people of the world know they've been bullies. They know they've been, you know, mean to meek people. They know they've been, they've, they've, they've ruined people's lives on purpose, you know, as sacrifices to boost themselves. They know what they've done. You know, it's not everybody, right? There are some very nice people out there that are, that are, that are, you know, not quite with the Lord and not, you know, they're just out there. 
And there's some very nice people that wouldn't hurt a fly. I know that. Uh, But what we have to do, you know, yes, there's plenty of cause to be angry, but we have to get beyond the trauma by forgiving them, you know, understanding. Forgive them, people. They know not what they do. They really are lost in their, you know, in their justification of everything. They've spent an entire lifetime justifying Satan in the name of God. They've, they've spent all their lives believing a lie. And the lie has caused them to manifest against people that mean them no harm. And they do this for their own power. Of course, you know that. And, and then now the power has kind of run out, hasn't it? God has separated lambs from their grip. <laughs> oh, yes, he has. That's another change I, I wasn't you know, prepared to talk about just yet, but I might as well now that it's spilled the beans. The lambs have been gathered and protected away from the clutches of these. You know, you have memories of all this going on in your life, but you can't say that today it's going to go on because you've been moved. You've been moved. And again, I'll say it. If you want a blessing of God, you know, and, and, and all that, a prophet's reward, then you will bless, find the lamb and bless the lamb. That's, that's all you got to do. And you will be brought in, you know, the, the, to relationship with God. And God will bless you, you know, with that prophet's reward. As if just like he blessed that lamb, you'll be blessed. A prophet's reward, take, take what you mean. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be something material like a job. It could be, you know, your, your sustenance for your family. It could be a lot. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's not going to be bad. Look it up in the Bible. Look up prophets, prophets reward. That's not P-R-O-F-I-T. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Look it up in the Bible and you'll see that I stand on firm script, scriptural ground here when I say bless the lambs. I'm not kidding because in so doing, you're blessing the Lord Jesus because he says, take care of my lambs. Don't you understand? We can do a whole study on lambs. God makes, you know, a lot of, yes, a lot of them are autistic or, you know, have Asperger's or slightly, you know, these people, they're, they're not, you know, for whatever reason, they're, they're not, they're not welcomed in and, you know, into the circle of shame, you know, or they, or they rebelled against it because they felt it was wrong, you know, because they're pure hearts, you know, the Lord loves his pure hearts, you know, it, but usually they die though. I mean, they don't, they don't make it past the teenage years. And the Lord has to avenge that, all that. All the ones that died have to be avenged because they died because of the bullying, you know. So that's, that's on America's hands, you know, unfortunately. It's, 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 it's you know, God's no respecter of persons, you know. Where that bullying happens, it's, that's, that's blood crying up from the ground, you know. There you go. That's just like, he sees those kids just like he sees the prophets that were, that were killed and then, and then enshrined later. Right. He sees, you know, it's, 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 he sees them just like innocent children, even if they're adults, you know, he sees them as, you know, you know, possibly, you know, adult children, man children, you know, some of them never are immature because they, they, they remain kind of childlike, uh, because they're just born that way, innocent, you know, and they just, it's, it's weird. It doesn't mean they should be criticized, punished and killed. Does it? Does it? No, so that's got to be avenged. So if you look at the list of things that has to be avenged, I mean, we've had the Civil War. That was kind of a vengeance, right? That was a, that was a judgment of God, right? We had World War II. We've had the, the, uh, the Revolutionary War. Where a lot of people died there. You know, these wars are kind of like judgments, too. Take a lot of the, uh, uh, you know. And there's been times of great repentance in the land where people would be nice to the, the, to the meek, amongst us, you know, or the lambs, you know, the innocent one, not making some kind of a, you know, high school or, you know, playground thing of making, you know, being, you know, beating them up every day. You know, if you really want to be with God, you can't be on that other side anyway. You can't be, you know, plotting against the lambs or keeping them on the Truman Show. You have to tell them what's what. If you know about, you know, world savvy in the world, you need to, if you know a lamb, you educate them as to what's going on out there and the dangers they're in. You know, you help them out a little bit. You don't just throw them to the wolves and then think you have no blood on your hands. 
you know, we have to be nicer to each other. We have to look out for each other. There are those among us who are very world savvy and, 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 and street smart. And they can just, they're like Esau. They can just get anything done anytime. And then there's those who, you know, through no fault of their own, have trouble, you know, maybe even tying their shoelaces. But I mean, should we mock them? Laugh at them? Throw rocks at them to see what they'll do? That's the stuff of the, of the sandbox. That's what little kids do. Now, by the time a, a man or woman comes to adulthood, the last thing they should be doing is teasing somebody. Or even worse, the misguided anger. Oh, boy. Y- you know, this person thinks they're above us, so we're going to get him. Ah, that, that. No, they don't think they're above you. They're just lambs. They don't know any better. So you're going to attack them? You're going to go get them? Force them to comply? Everyone's, no one gets out of here alive type of thing? Everybody has to conform to the devil or, or, or the ship sinks? I mean, or, or we go to straight, straight to war against people that mean no harm? They don't even know what you're talking about. They don't even know there's a side called Satan. Many of them, you know, when they're kids. They can learn that, but they don't know that. You know, and even if you told them, they wouldn't believe you. Okay, we've gone on a bit. Uh, You just got here, Trish? I've been on my own this whole time. Since 3 a.m. Well, it's uh, half past the hour here. It's uh, 5.37 a.m., We've been here since about uh, 3.30. We, 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 we've been here a good two and a half hours. And um, boy, this this conversation or whatever we're having, it really went somewhere. <laughs> it really went out there. I mean, gosh. Yeah, I do have a burden for my brother who is meek. You know what I mean? Who couldn't defend himself. And that then takes the form of people out there. You know, so I do my speech about bullying. And, you know, I was bullied, but I'm kind of, you know, God just used that to toughen me up. You know what I mean? It's like I, I, I'm not, I don't consider myself in the same category as a lot of the meek in that sense because I feel like I can defend myself, you know, pretty well. But a lot of people can't, and they're traumatized because of the treatment they've gotten. They wouldn't know. Like if you were sitting there and your, your, you know, your, your, your family lawyer goes talking on the phone with a third party going, oh, yeah, he thought he was a producer. <laughs> and you're sitting right there, right? And they're just, you're being mocked. You know, they, they figure you're too stupid to even know what they just said. Um, that kind of thing is very painful, but it's true. You know, it's true. They, they think that if you're not, you know, that, that somehow the satanic initiation is the vetting of people. And it it certainly is not. They think it's growing up. It certainly is not. If anything, it's making people more childish. I'm, um, I can't believe how backwards this place is actually. How backwards these, how stupid these people are. I can't, I, this was a lawyer. She's stupid. Utterly stupid to have said that in front of me. Because see, karmically, you know, uh, and, and, or let's make it personal, you know, from the Lord's point of view, that person is, 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 you know, targeted now by the entire kingdom of God for pain and suffering and breaking. And that's probably what happened to her. But um, you you don't you can't do that in front of people. You can't behave that way. If there is a Truman Show thing going on, then you need to tell the people that are on the Truman Show that there's a an off stage and go ahead and be honest with them. Don't just let them sit there and take sh- shots. I mean, if you want God's favor, or if you don't, just keep on the way you're going, and you'll you'll get sl- slammed to the pavement. You'll, you'll be like those people diving out of the nine eleven towers, you know, out of, out of the World Trade Center swan diving into the pavement. I mean, if that's what you want, keep on doing what you're doing. I guarantee you that day of reckoning is coming. I guarantee you. You better get your, you know, what together because I guarantee you that day, your day will come. I need that. Where's that song? Your day will come when you least expect it. Remember that one, Trish? What was the name of that? I played the new song already. It's a, it's probably the best mix I've done. And I, now I just, I hate that because it, the standard keeps getting higher. It's harder and harder to achieve that, that higher level. 
It's more well. It wasn't hard to achieve it. Actually, it was. I didn't do anything. I I don't know. You know, it's it's the technical end of of making you know records is um, it's mysterious. No, I don't say what I do is make tracks. I don't make tracks. I make records here. Yeah, it's uh you know it's it's a uh, quacks like a duck, looks like a duck, etc. Then it's a record. Okay. If I was making tracks here that just put on SoundCloud or whatever, we put them there. But I mean, they're, don't make make no mistake, they're records. That's what I wanted to do with my life. That's what I'm doing. If I wanted to make tracks, I would just get my laptop out and stay in, you know, and just have a copy of whatever, you know, and just make little tracks and put them out there. There's nothing wrong with making tracks. I like tracks. I use tracks. I make tracks too. But I also make records. It doesn't mean they have to go to pressing in a record company or to, to a CD. It's, it's about quali- quality. It's a qualitative uh, a moniker that's being put on it. And I take, it, you know, I take that seriously. You know, I, work, I work hard at it. I study. I, I do whatever I have to do to make that sound, to, to create that sound. And that's just not a skill that people have. Oh, you could develop it, but you, know, you, know, you need God-given ears. But certainly you can develop it, but it takes dedication, hard work, and years. Years and years. And, you know, probably faster if you can be an apprentice. And uh, if not, you can just have to double down. I was kind of an apprentice to, to Rob, the, uh, the guy that d- designed my studio. He, um, you know, he, he trained me quite a bit. I, I absorbed everything I could from him. I don't mix like him, but, I mean, you know, he's won a Grammy for mixing. He makes records. He made a great record in Detroit. You know, fabulous, just un- unreal. You know, but that's what I do. You know, that's what I wanted to do. That's why I hired him to to train me because I couldn't get in an apprentice thing. But I had him, so I have him come out. And just we just mix for three days. You know, on end. So you know, paid some dues, but that's because that's what I wanted to do, and that's what I did. You know. So I kind of, you know, I don't fall in that category like my brother. You know, I mean, I, I wanted to get that done and I went and got it done. But I'm still a lamb at the end of the day and they can, they can mock me all they like. I mean, I'm sure they do. I can't stop them. But they can't stop me from making a record. They'd like to. Oh, he thinks he's a record producer. No, I, I, I make records. I really am. And here's the proof. I think I'm a record, you know. Yeah, I know they're going to say stuff like that. That's okay. I welcome a good fight. Let me tell you what the fight really is. Is That kind of mocking that goes on, I'm just telling you, anyone that does it, you're going to be mocked the same way. You're going to be harmed the same way you're harming someone else. So I would think twice before going around and just... uh, picking on people or, you know, laughing at them because they don't know the, the, the secret of uh, the secret handshake or whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. No, sir. Some of us take this, very, this walk very seriously. You know, we know what we are. We know what the stakes are. We know what, we've, we know what the world is. We know where the offstage is. We know who the people are offstage. We know they can see us. They act like they don't, but we know they do. And we know they plot against God and his anointed. We know that. We know all that. Our eyes are open. And so funny, knowing all that, we, we go out with the courage of the Lord, with his promises. He guides us right through and confounds them to, 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 to tears. Confounds them to tears. It's the, the Lord loves that. It's the game of chicken. You know? It's, he loves playing that game of chicken. He loves it to see who's going to blink. And they, they always end up blinking. We don't blink. We're not playing a game of deception. They are. You know, they, they think it's really funny. But, you know, um, many of those who like to laugh or, you know, who've given traumas, you know, there's some people that have been traumatized and they never got over it. I don't think any of us really ever gets over it, you know, but they've been traumatized by, by, by the bullies, you know, fighting out about this situation, finding out they've been a big fool, finding out, you know, re- re- recalling all the times that they were brought in or they were treated differently when they went to a party or p- treated differently when they went to a job, you know what I mean? As if the whole job was created just for them, you know, to set up a, a game to get them somehow, to get what's inside them. 
And, you know, they feel so terrible and so traumatized and they never got over it. They just, they couldn't admit it to anybody because it makes them sound crazy. So they've been hiding in their, in their hovels ever since, you know, on disability of some sort maybe, you know, but unable to participate in the world in any way, shape, or form or even really go outside. Uh, they will be avenged. Count on it. And that's society-wide, that vengeance. That's, that's you know, every, right? That's worldwide. That's every hamlet, every village, every city, every place of dwelling. Anywhere where any of this has gone on, it will be dealt with where it's gone on. The Lord will see to it. He will dispatch his angels. He will he will pour out his bowls and vials. He will uh, destroy the earth entirely to make sure this gets done. He will not let his children be harmed without a response. It's just that out of his infinite compassion and love for, you know, us, he will hold that back till the end. I mean, sure, bad things happen all the time, but I mean, the big giant, you know, the end, you know, end of the earth and end of the sun and end of all that. And then the bringing of the new heaven and new earth and the new Jerusalem and all that. He waits to the very end to, to meet out the balance. What he's really doing is balancing, right? Everything is balanced. And, um, you know, you don't again, once again, if you want to have a good life, okay, that means relatively free of pain, having good opportunities, having, you know, having provision and having, you know, just having the, the basic decent life. I'm not saying it'll be a free ride, but just having a basic decent life. Then you must be a protector of the lambs, even if you're you know, on the world side. You must find a way to bless the lambs or you will have a miserable time. Well, you won't have a miserable time, I guess, when you're maybe in your 20s or your 30s. But, you know, one day it'll come, you know, and it'll never get back. It'll just be like supernatural one thing after another. And, it, you, you, it, you know, you might even feel like it's deserved. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is if you, you want to get out of that pattern or out of that crosshairs, you will bless the lambs. Everyone has lambs around them. I don't care where you are in the world, there are lambs around. You know, you'll see they're throwing rocks at them. They're mocking them. And you're going to have to step in and say no. You know, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. The world will always have lambs. Always. Not everyone's going to be world savvy. There's always going to be lambs. And um, there's always going to be a temptation to laugh at them. But make no mistake. God is speaking to you now through this broadcast about what you will do. And I'm sure you'll do it because you don't want to have a ruined life, do you? And, you know, who knows? The Lord will separate you too and you'll be a lamb before you know it. And, uh, and then you'll see what it's like. But no worries, because you see the reward is greater than what it's like, you know, day to day, day to day. But um, I guess it's human nature to pick on that which is weaker than us. It's human nature to um, mock people that don't know the inside story, the inside scoop on what's happening. You know what I mean? These are the dunces, the idiots. They don't know. They don't know any better. They think. You know, they think they're this or that, but in order to be this or that, you really got to be on our side of things. You know, then you can be a, a painter or a producer or whatever you do. But uh, you know, people that think they are and they're just living in a Truman show. <laughs> uh, that is the most traumatizing thing. Uh, the Lord looks at that as murder. What I just that exchange right there, that's called murder. You murdered the person. Oh, they're still living, but they're dead. They're, they're, they're so traumatized now they can't, they can't breathe. You have murdered them and the blood is on your hands and it's just, maybe you did it back in high school, but I mean, you're going to have to, to, to reconcile that. You have to get right with God. You're going to have to make it okay. Jesus is not a passive occupation where you sit there and go, I'm saved. Me and Pete, we've been saved. 
and then just sit back and do nothing. You know, we each have a life path and that path is proactive. The path of Christ is proactive. There's nothing I can do to earn my salvation. No, we're not talking about earn it. It's like, but if you are one of his, you do certain things, right? That would reflect your position so the world would know who you are. Okay, so, okay, enough lecturing, enough, enough preaching. That was preaching, by the way. Uh, no, they will never let me in a pulpit. In nowhere in America or the world would they allow me to sit there behind a pulpit and speak other than, you know, mocking me as being on the Truman Show while they're all nodding and wanking during my speech, which, of course, the Lord would never allow. The other thing is, you know, scenes like that tend to get people poisoned, okay? Tend to get people dead. So that's, you know, that's never going to happen. The world is a hostile place for those who tell the truth. As far as I'm concerned, they're lambs, right? Those who tell the truth. Um, well, specifically what I mean is when, when a, a lamb is, someone, they're born like that and they just don't see their pure hearts, right? They don't see the world system. They don't see the, you know, they don't get initiated into it. They don't become the cool guy that knows what's happening, man. You know what I mean? They're, they're just, they're, they're left on the Truman Show and not realizing there's this whole offstage world they're, not, they're no part of. It's through no fault of their own, though. You know, a lot of families that are, you know, well-to-do, they just take kids like that and sacrifice them. I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's, 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 it's absolutely disgusting. And when you say the nation that, that allows such things should be blessed, because people, they all look the other way. Cops look the other way. Everyone looks the other way. You think that nation's going to be blessed? Okay, Trish. Now, I was talking. You, you've heard me. I'm, I'm starting to wear down now. Dasha's been so good. She's been out there watching, waiting. And uh, so I guess we, you know, I mean, what's happened, what's changed is we've had that little, you know, somehow I, I broke her that of that, of, you know, somehow wanting to bark when I was talking. I don't know what it, she was trying to get my attention, I think, to, to stop talking and to deal with her, you know. She needs her own pot. I'm going to put her on. Does she, she? Does she, she? She's looking at me. She's outside. She's looking at me. She, she. <laughs> her ears are, she's getting treated with her ears and She's got the most unbelievable ears I've ever seen. You know, how they stick straight up. They're like radars. They're just really amazing. Um, but anyway, I'm... Uh, okay, that's my impassioned plea, you know, to, to help take care of the meek upon the earth. And, you know, every one of us has those in our community and there are those in your extended friends or whatever. And, and they... Um, most case, they just need a, you know, a friend that's just not playing a game with them. You know, a friend that's being real. That's all they need. They just need, you know, some basic respect and love. It's not a big deal. You know, but I understand. If the world sees you being nice like that, then they jump on you. I understand. It's terrible. It's deserving of a nuclear judgment. Every man, woman, and child nuked. It's on that scale, unfortunately. That's what's built up. It's it, to balance it. You got to do something like that. You know, it's it's just not balanced. But it's out of the Lord's infinite love for His own and for all of us, including the sinners, especially. You know, people that have participated in that kind of bullying. It's for it's for it's to give them time to repent. And then, guy like me is here saying, you know, I've been through the whole brunt of it. And and. You know, and I'm I'm not I'm not here hating on you at all. I'm just saying this is what God will do. Repent. That's my message to you. It's a message of love, not hatred. I don't want vengeance. I don't want I certainly don't want to give, you know, what I got to anyone. Even if you've if you've been a an evil doer, I don't want to pay you back in kind. I want you to to get right with the Lord. I want you to be happy. Well, I think, you know, well, how did I get to be like that? I think over time, the Lord just grinded me down to where um, 
maybe back in the beginning, you know, I wanted vengeance for people that hated the lambs and hated God's people, hated God, and then pretended to be running the churches and all that. See, to me, they go, I'm a pastor. I, I could say on the phone, ah, ha, ha. he thought he was a pastor because ah, I know God, right? Because I know that in God's eyes, you ain't no pastor. <laughs> See, I could do the same thing that way. Tit for tat. <laughs> he, he said, Rick Warren thought he was actually in God's favor. <laughs> right? When he's neat, he's, he's, he's up to his eyeballs in the, in the world system. I mean, absolutely. What's that? Chrislam, yeah, no, he's, he's, we called him out, I don't know how many years ago, and he has never changed, it, he, he will never change, he's just, uh, you know, his son, you know, um, is in a better place, I'll just put it that way, I hate to say it, but, uh, you know, it almost looks like they, they, they he, the son was a sacrifice for the family, you know, the way they were acting, uh, certainly it looked like that. But, um, you know, we could laugh. I could have Rick Warren right in front of me right now. And I could be talking to God on the phone. And I'm going to go, he thinks he's a, he's a pa- he doesn't realize what he is. <laughs> and look at all the people he's leading who will have the confidence. It's like when you see Hillary Clinton and she's, you know, the, the most evil, criminal, lying bitch ever, you know, on the planet. Just a horrible monster of a person. And they cheer you think, do they have a brain cell? No, the people are stupid. That's why Rich and I were thinking we're in a world of holograms because they're stupid, the people. You know, now I'm like 10 times smarter than everybody. You know, well, I used to be born even, but in this world, they're stupid. That's what the, the song was about. You, go, you know, they're holograms. They're stupid, Right. Now, I can't go around mocking like that all the time because God would smack me down, you know, because I'm supposed to take it seriously. But it's, I'll I'll just put it this way. It seems like many of these people are stupid. That's why you say, well, I guess what happens is this. When you get initiated, vetted by the world, when you become one of them, you have to check your brains in at the door. That's one of the most important things. You have to go with group think at that point. You're stupid. I'm amazed if the message today gets out to anybody that's in that category because they would have to be quite a man, quite a woman to admit their mistake, to agree that, you know, that that see the situation, see how they look in God's eyes, to make that repentance and to to bless lambs, you know, to get it. They would have to be a very special person, a a very, uh, probably a prodigal son or daughter and to be a very, um, you know, great person. Because it takes a great person to to admit their faults and to repent, to make to try to make things right. It takes a very big person to do that. The little scaredy cats out there, they'll never do that. You know what I mean? But uh, to, 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 to admit, you know, the mistake and to say, you know, you realize that you can't serve two masters and you've been, you know, mean to the lambs and you've been, you know, mocking God unwittingly. You know, I didn't realize you were, but now you realize you have been. And I repent, Lord, and I want to go with you. And I just, I want to go with you in the end. I want to go with you upon death. I want to, I just want to serve you. I just want to be the extension of your will, Lord. You know, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the lambs, I'm going to be their, their, their friend. I want to be a lamb too, you know, and it's, it's, it's takes a big man, big woman to, to really roll all that back, all that experience, all those years of thinking they were right all those years of thinking they were serving God when they weren't to be able to admit a total failure like that and then make a new start. That takes a very, you know, respect worthy person that that's a really great person right there. That's a person that we all ought to respect and a person that, that should have our best. That's a person that would be welcomed, you know, into the kingdom of God, you know, wholeheartedly. Uh, that would be a, uh, you know, I don't see that too often. People who admit their mistakes and, you know, who make make amends to go on and try to do better next time. And that it just takes a special person today, especially when today everybody blames everything on everyone else. <laughs>